Hello world, if you're considering a new monitor, say a productivity monitor in 2023 or 2024, you may wanna take a look at this video as I'm gonna compare two of, I'd say the top ones that people have recommended. So let's take a look at them today. First, we have the Dell 43 inch. We also have an LG over here and we have a studio display. So let me preface this video and welcome back to Nick Pixel TV, by the way. Let me preface this video with saying, for my needs, I was looking for something that was larger than 27 inches that would cover me for both my Windows desktop, a Windows laptop, MacBook Pro. I'm primarily a Mac user, so I really like the studio display, but there's some drawbacks to it as well. And I don't think the perfect monitor really exists today as of yet. I think we're getting very close. And they do have some nice ones in like the 27 to 32 inch range. Now the 32 inch Apple Pro Display XDR, that's an option for some, but you're talking 5,000, 4,000 bucks. And I think that's just a little steep for, for most people. Now, if you're making money with your equipment, it's no big deal. But for the average user looking for a productivity monitor in business or personally, and just have one monitor that kind of does a little bit of everything, maybe not the best in one category, but a little bit of everything, these could be some options. So to my right here, this is the Dell 43. Uh, I have to look this on the on the phone <laughs> just because it's the, the numbers are all different. They have so many different versions. There's a 43 inch U4323QE. Uh, it's a flat screen, of course, 4K UHD, IPS panel, height adjustable, no video conferencing, integrated USB hub, which is nice. 90 watt power delivery over USB-C and the colors are okay. It's like 95% sRGB. So it's not the perfect monitor. The brightness is great. It's okay on this one. It's not the best, but it is good for what it, what it is. Now, 43 inches in 4K, this is a big monitor, right? It's like a television screen and it works really, really well. I've been running it for about a month, uh, maybe a month and a half. And I just switched over to the LG. We're gonna try that one out. There's benefits and drawbacks to both. So we're gonna talk about those. Now, what I'd like, let me just move you over here. So when you look at a monitor like this, obviously the height adjustability is nice and you can you know, pick that up, tilt it, everything else. It, it, does, it does work out pretty well. What I like is the ability to sit a few feet away. Now my desk is I think 30 inches. So I'm sitting probably three feet away from the monitor as you can probably see that in the video. But I like a, a, a screen that you can see. Now, right now I'm running this monitor at 125% scale and I'm still running it at the 4K resolution. It's starting to get small. If you run this at 100%, the text really does get small. So I just threw some text up on there, but you can definitely have multiple windows on here. You can break this monitor up. This is really cool because Dell has really good software uh, to control the monitor. So you're not reaching for buttons all the time. What I like about this monitor is everything today I like to use is USB-C. Now your, I have a Dell Alienware back there. That has a 4090 in it. No USB-C for like Thunderbolt for connecting your monitors. But the laptops do. So I have the Samsung laptop here and I have my MacBook Pro. This monitor here is a 60 Hertz refresh rate. Not the best for gaming, not the best input lag for gaming. You could game on it, but it's not gonna give you the best results, especially when people have 120, 160, 175, 200 frames a second, stuff like that. 60 Hertz monitor, not too bad. It's smooth with the mouse. It, it's gonna work out okay for you. The big thing that I like to, to use is one, one cable. So you got a Thunderbolt cable. I happen to use the Apple Thunderbolt cables. They're not the cheapest, but they work. I like the braiding on them. There's cheaper ones on Amazon. But one cable gives you your display, connectivity, and it also sends power to the laptop. So this monitor outputs 90 watts power delivery. What's cool about this monitor, you also have two extra ports here that pop down in the front. And these two ports are a USB-A and a USB-C, which is nice. Nice IO for the front of the monitor. It is nice to just plug something in from the desk. This little pop down. On the power delivery, you are limited to, I think, 15 watts though. So you can charge a cell phone or an iPad, whatever the case may be, but it's not really gonna run your, your laptop or power your laptop really quickly. So another cool thing that Dell did with this monitor as we flipped it around, you have a ton of IO. So you got your power, 
you have two HDMIs, you have two display ports, you have your USB-C Thunderbolt 90 watt power delivery port, you have USBs across, 10 gig USBs across, and they also included a network port, RJ45. Now this is cool because if you have a network cable, now normally they're blue, whatever the case may be, RJ45, you can hardwire your monitor versus using like the Dell right now, or the Samsung right now is using Wi-Fi. You can plug right in your CAT6 cable, plug this side into your network, and now you're hardwired, and if I plugged into my network, through this one cable connected to my laptop, I have hardwire, internet, gigabit connection. I would love to see a two and a half gig port or even a 10 gig port, but that'll come in time. But one gig connection is gonna be mo good for, for most to be hardwired, and at least you're hardwired if you, if you have bad Wi-Fi. So that's all built into the monitor. It's an excellent thing that they did. This monitor's heavy. I don't think people are really worried about weight when it comes to a monitor as far as, you know, as long as you have a decent desk, you're gonna be fine. But they've included that with this monitor, and I like that because one cable gives you everything. So now we swap this back around. As you can see, at 125%, it is not uh, the largest text. Uh, and it's really hard to, I, I mean, I could, I guess, do a screenshot of the screen, but for the sake of this video, I just wanted to kind of highlight this monitor. I think this monitor is going to be great in the business realm and, and work for many that, that like to have two screens but don't want to take up the width of two screens side by side or if you were going to stack the screens. I think that this would be a great solution that you could have two windows or even four windows going on this. And if you're sitting about three feet away, it's going to be perfect. If you're too close to this monitor, you're going to find yourself going left and right too many times. And I, I think without having a little bit of curve, it, it, it could be cumbersome if you're too close to the screen. This could be a, a great monitor. Now Dell does make a 6K version of this and it has a webcam and everything built in. I'm not a big fan of that because I use separate cameras. And then if you get two of these screens or you'd stack two side by side, you got two cameras, just more things to mess around with. Uh, I like a clean display. Uh, the bezels, on this aren't the thinnest, but that's okay. They're not, they're not horrible. You're talking one screen. So you're probably, you know, an option could be buying two of these, but you're taking up a ton of desk space. So for my use case uh, in the bunker here, I was hoping to get down to one monitor that would, would, that would do well for all my devices. I don't do a ton of gaming, but it would be nice to have uh, the option, I guess, available. So what's cool about this monitor, Dell software, you install it on your computer, it works well, doesn't call any, cause any issues, but you can switch screens, you can control the monitor right from an app. So on this Samsung display here, I can just go to the Dell control center and I can change like display, the brightness, the color, the uh, KVM switch and how that works all from the, the Dell application. So that works out really well. Other cool thing is if I want to run this with a Mac, I can just unplug this Samsung, plug in the MacBook Pro, and it does okay. Not the highest pixel density. So an Apple Studio display is like 218 PPI. They call it like, this, this is an ultra sharp display from Dell, which Dell ultra sharps are usually pretty good. Um, the Studio display over, hopefully you can see that back in the corner there. That one's like 218. So a lot more pixels per inch, a little bit more clarity for that higher resolution, everything else, um, there's a range there. I think this Dell's 103 or 104, so a little bit lower on the, the pixel quality. The brightness is okay on this size of a screen. It could be brighter. It's not gonna be as many nits as like, say your studio display, but it works for what it is. And, and I haven't noticed an issue and I'm in a pretty bright room from time to time. I can make it darker. I don't have sunlight though, beaming in on the display. That could affect you with this display. Let's swap over to what I'm running now, and here's another option for you. So here we have the LG 40-inch 40 WP95CW 5K 2K Nano IPS monitor. Now this thing ranges anywhere from $1799, $1599, so a little bit more. By the way, that Dell monitor is like $800. Bucks. So not too crazy on the cost for what you get. It's so close. If they would increase the, the pixel density, probably the brightness, a little bit better on the sRGB color because I think it's only 95%. And 
maybe a two and a half gig port, that thing would almost be perfect, right? It, input lag, stuff like that. This one here is like 70, I forget how many hertz this one is, but um, let, me, let me pull up some specs here. Now you got a height adjustable stand on this as well. You're gonna go width, so if you're 21 by nine ratio, so if you're watching like a cinematic type of movie, you're not gonna get the black bars in the top and bottom. Uh, but for a little bit more, this is one monitor that's sitting a few feet away. I am scaled to 125% on this monitor, which is, for some, it's probably gonna be too small. The text is probably gonna be too small. The recommendation on this display is to set it to uh, 150. At 150%, it, it is clear. So this monitor has like 140 PPI, so pixels per inch. So a little bit higher pixel density, a little bit clearer, not the brightest display. I think also if you had direct sunlight or sunlight affecting your room, this might, I think at full brightness, you're gonna be okay, but you, you, it's, it's, if you're comparing it to something like the studio display, uh, you're definitely gonna see the brightness difference. Um, what's cool is this does do power delivery as well. So one cable, 96 watts on this one. So you got like six more watts of power, 96 watts power delivery via a USB-C cord. So what I have here, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to kind of see my setup and I'll, I'll move over. So what, what I have on my desk right now, is of course we have the studio display, which I like, but it's a small screen. So I'm kind of stuck. If I just put that there, I have like a lot more room that I could work with. The option could be go two with two of these, but at that rate with two of these, you're talking, you're still limited on the Thunderbolt. If they would have put some type of connection without having adapters and losing some of the functionality of, you know, screen brightness and stuff on the keyboard, it would be nice to just use maybe two of those. The Apple uh, Pro Display XDR is 32 inches, gets you a little bit more real estate. It's also $5,000. So I just don't think it, and it's this is still 60 Hertz. So I, I just don't think it's like we're there yet on the monitors. Maybe I'm missing something. I know Samsung released the Arc uh, 55 inch, no Thunderbolt, no power delivery. And for me, and I think for many that have a laptop and a desktop, you're gonna want the power delivery so you have one less cable. Right now on my Mac, I do have two cables because I'm running a QNAP um, 10 gig adapter, which I could run right through my NAS and just have one cable. And I've done that in the past, but it's just easy to plug in the, uh, the QNAP adapter and I have 10 gig. But on the, on the MacBook, you have one, one port um, as well. So let me get this out of the way here. And if we go to this, this cable here is my other USB-C cable. It's plugged into the back of this monitor. So very easily, I could take a laptop, get 96 watts power delivery. The one thing you would be missing is the hard wire link to um, your network. So that the Dell wins in that category because you're, you're going to have to run Wi-Fi or a separate adapter. Um, you can buy USB-C adapters like this that would have your, your network port and then USB-C and you could buy a hub and you have more IO with that, but it's another device to plug in. So one thing about this is I wanted to have something that on the back of this, I can plug into the back here, behind here is the uh, Alienware, but I wanted to have the Alienware plug in, which is using DisplayPort. So this has DisplayPort or HDMI, that comes into this and then you can switch. If you plug a device in, it's going to tell you hey, we've detected a new device. Do you want to hit it and, and connect to it? So external display port, you hit yes, it's going to swap over and do its thing. Now I have noticed sometimes there's lag on how, um, and I want to make sure that we're, now I have noticed you see the lag and the delay, it didn't even pick that up uh, because the screen was uh, blank. So I have noticed with the LG display, one, their software about crashed my whole PC. It's very slow, it's laggy, and I don't know if they need a new update to it or if the new update's gonna come out, but I saw some complaints on that. Yeah, I had to totally uninstall their monitor software. So I'm down to using buttons to control everything. The display quality is nice. I will give it that. The display quality, it looks good. That's probably why it only has 3.7 stars, but, needs external speakers. That just, I was just looking at a review. 
That's the other thing. The Dell, I didn't have to use external speakers. The Dell monitor, I could get away with the speakers that are built in. I think Dell wins in that category on that monitor. And right now on this one, I'm just using this Bose, this older Bose wireless uh, Bluetooth speaker because it's, it's just better than what's built in the LG. Now, it's better to have speakers than not because if you do plug in, at least you'll have some sound. But the quality of, of the LG sound is not close to the Dell, in my opinion, or even the studio display, which also has built-in speakers. So to me, this one here, I think is 71 hertz, it might be 75, it's in the 70s. I'd have to see if it shows me where that's at here. Um, I'm pretty sure it's like 71. But 21 by nine, uh, brightness, uh, 100, no, color depth 107, 98% on the color gamut, DC IP3, IPS display, 72 hertz, uh, refresh rate, 72 hertz. So uh, 72 hertz on that one, a little bit faster. I don't think too many things are going to take advantage of 72 hertz, but it, it is a little bit nicer on um, that aspect. Input and output might be a little bit better if you're a gamer. It might work out better for you. It does nice. It's nice with the, the slight curve to it. We could take a look at the input output, but really it's just uh, you know, your display ports, HDMI. I'll put a little picture up on the screen of that. It's really basic. Uh, nothing on the front, nothing on the bottom that you can plug into. So I think Dell is very close with the ultra sharp display. I think if you're an all around, I'm going to run this for like a month. Maybe I'm missing something. If you guys have any suggestions on what I could run or something to take a look at, maybe I've missed it. I've shopped the market a, a good bit to see what's coming out and in a, in a price conscious sense because what I don't use here, I mean, I have customers that buy stuff and uh, we're always constantly testing stuff and trying stuff out to find out what the best display is and, and moving equipment. This is just a little Samsung display up here, this little 4K display. That's piped off of that system. I, I really like the... The, the studio display for the 5K, um, I, I do actually um, tend to use that. I'm surprised that one didn't pick up. But the studio display is like really responsive as far as when you plug in, it's, it's there. So Apple works good with Apple. Um, I do run this at almost the full resolution because I'm sitting close to it. Uh, the brightness definitely on the studio display is a lot brighter. So I wasn't going to go into a review on each monitor because there's tons of reviews out there. I just wanted to talk about practical uses of people are considering these and they're buying them and then they, they send them back if they don't work. I think that if you're sitting too far away on this, at 100% scale, if I look at 100% scale on this, even sitting a couple, oh, I'm at 150 now, but I mean at 100% scale, which is, I mean, it's tiny. So if you were sitting here, I think you'd be spot on. Sitting back here, I mean, I have 20-20 vision, and it, it's still, I, I think that would be a, a lot to get used to. You'd have a ton of real estate, but I think most people are going to run this at probably 125 or 150. I'm pretty comfortable at 125, so that's me personally. Everybody's eyesight's going to be different. Um, the black-to-black -black on these, you know, in the corners, it's not the not the greatest it's not the worst they all have a little bit in the corners where it's uh you can tell you know in the lighting um i i personally liked that dell screen but it did it, it is tough if you put like a webcam on top you're, you're looking way up because it sits probably about four or five inches higher probably sits about this high and then you, you'd have a webcam sitting up here so this is nice i think maybe if, if this is a 40 i think maybe like a 42 would be perfect on a desk and I mean this is going to be great for like final cut editing timeline stuff like that so just a simple video of what uh, I would love love to see in the market I think some people are really close I think Dell's really close to their ultra sharp I know they make that 6k version but that's also 2500 bucks there's gonna be a ton of specials right now Black Friday coming up everything else uh, technology people are coming out with new stuff old stuff you can probably get in a deal but that's what I'm looking for is something that's good for the desktop, laptop, everything else. And uh, hopefully this video is helpful on these monitors. If you have any questions on them or if you have any suggestions, throw them in the comments and I'll uh, do my best to uh, respond to you. And hopefully this was helpful in some way to you. Take care. We'll see you in the next Pixel.